All right, guys, how you doing? It's Tacoma Comics here, and we've got pick of the week number four, eight, twelve. It's probably numbers like twenty through twenty-three because I am three weeks behind, and next week is New Comic Book Day, so I need to get these done and out of there. Big shout out to Just Rican. He did a shout out Sunday show uh, yesterday or two days ago. And he shouted out my channel, which I really appreciate. And he'd asked me about an Instagram earlier. And he's like, hey, anything you want me to tell you? And I was like, yeah. Uh, tell people about my pick of the week is like the only show I have that comes out weekly. Otherwise, everything is kind of like random. And so he's like, cool. And he kind of laughed about it as he was telling people about it. He's like, yeah, you know, Tacoma Comics says he tries to get these things out on time, but doesn't always do it. And he's right. I am way behind, so I'm going to kind of blast through this with the intention of picking it up again this uh, this week. We'll see what we can do. So these are three weeks of comics all smushed, um, not necessarily in any order, so don't think like, you know, this necessarily, this is last week, this is the week before, this is the week before that. This is just three weeks of uh, new comics all mushed together. So what do we have? Champions, this is getting, this whole Jim Zub run has been really good, um, and this is getting really good. I don't like the kind of tall pointy cover art here, um, but uh, it's a better view of it. Um, I'm not used to having sunshine in this room, but definitely pretty cool. Um, the story is really good. There's like, they're fighting, fighting on all fronts, and Cyclops is back, and you know, um, the young Cyclops had left, and so nobody was sure what the heck was going on. But now, because, you know, comics is comics and time is time, and and uh, the X-Men are the X-Men, Cyclops is back, and he's fighting with them, and he's giving them props. And it's actually just a really cool, um, really cool issue. Uh, a lot of, not teen angst, but teen um, confusion over their place in the universe, and a lot of good battles, just a lot of fighting. All right. I don't know how long the nightmare stuff has been going on, but it seems like it's been going on for a long time. Um, and, you know, besides the fact that you get Naked Bane in here, um, there wasn't much to this this issue. Uh, it seems like Bane is behind all these nightmares that Batman's having. Um, Batman just keeps plowing through and, and killing everybody. Um, but there's there's fight scenes hinted at but not really shown all right so it's like oh yeah we just beat up Solomon Grundy in vain um and then I woke up realized there's a nightmare and and I had to beat up somebody else and it goes on and on and on and and you know I'm not one of those Tom King trackers I like his writing I like his Batman stuff but I'm totally lost here as to what's going on be honest with you uh here's a series that is going out on a really good note um they're bringing it to a nice uh, climactic ending. Every page of this issue was about Mac and April and the four, is it April? And the four girls, whoever their names are, uh, Mac and Kate, and I can't remember all of them. But uh, it's really nice how they handled it. You know, you can see why are we here um, and the whole entire uh, comic basically echoed that, that sentiment as to what's going on. Things are coming to a head. The artwork by Cliff Chang, as usual, is gorgeous. Um, the nods to the '80s are not um, are not overt and cheesy. They're actually really good. Like, uh, you had to be there. You had to live through it to really get it. Um, so, I mean, just really, really, really cool stuff. Uh, great wraparound cover as well. Uh, you know, for his other series, not Saga. Ryan K. Vaughan is doing a really nice job on that. I wish this thing would end. I don't care. It's boring and dumb and dark, and I hate it, and I can't wait for it to be over. Um, it had me intrigued the first 10 issues. And then my disease took over, where if I have the first 10 issues of a modern run, I find it really hard to stop and say no to the rest of it. That's just the way it is. Invisible Kingdom is really good by G. Willow Wilson and Christian Ward. It's building up just this nice story where there's like this Amazon company in space that basically controls everything. It's like an interstellar Amazon, right? They control everything, but it looks like they're in cahoots with 
uh, secret temple society that's supposed to be all about asceticism and um, obedience, but actually looks like at the top levels they're in cahoots to ruling the universe with this uh, Amazon space company. And that's probably a really horrible description of it, but um, it's been really good, uh, really enjoyable. I don't know where my number one is, and that's driving me crazy. I can't find it. Uh, this is a solid story. The artwork is gorgeous. I'm not sure that Rob Guillory's uh, dialogue is as fascinating as John Lehman's was in Shoe. So I, what I mean by that is like the actual story where it's going is really good and his ability to plot out things. Um, but it just doesn't, you don't get that like intimate feeling you did with Agent Tony Chu as your protagonist in the last one. The artwork, however, is great. Um, it's just different enough from Chu to not feel like it's a copy, but very, you know, similar bits and pieces. Um, great fight scene here with one of the guys who is his dad's first transplant. Um, so thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying Farmhand. Really, really digging it. Um, something's going on and it's coming to a nice end of this arc. Little Lumberjanes action, uh, pretty good issue. They've got to go find Mal. She's lost in another dimension. They try to find Nellie, who's the lady they know who helps you get to other dimensions, but they can't find her, so they got to go on their own, um, and they run into dinosaur birds. It's a great comic. I mean, just that much. They're going to other dimensions to save their friends, and they find dinosaur birds. What more do you want from a comic? That's, that's Lumberjanes in a nutshell up to issue 62 already. I love this comic. Pearl hit a bit of a boring note for me. Not much happened except a guy gets his hand cut off. Pearl realizes that um, she could have had her dad out of prison um, without having going all the way to Japan. Most of this is just her in Japan and her boyfriend getting tattoos and her dealing with Yakuza. Uh, the artwork and the colors are absolutely incredible um just beautiful beautiful stuff in here michael gatos is is killing it on this book um it's just gorgeous and usually really really good i would say this is the first issue issue nine where i've been like okay it's not not a killer issue it's just advancing the story along and there's nothing wrong with that sometimes you have to do that so i'm down with it uh this issue had to do with snakes this is probably would be winning all my picks of the weeks, but I have like, I've read the first trade one through six and I have like half the comics between six and 22, which this one is, but I don't want to read the rest of the story out of order. So I haven't read anything beyond six, even though I've got it on my pull list now. Uh, is that crazy or do other people do that? Let, let me know. This is still really good. I had a big problem with issue four. I think it hit a flat note, but um, this is pulled back really nicely. Miles Morales is off in the woods. He's been missing for weeks, but in his own timeline, he's been missing for like a day because there's a time loop and it's just a, a big old fight um, with Riri and Miles against like weird bad guys and, and space monsters. It looks like they killed the space monster at the end, which I thought was kind of strange. Um, this one right here, classic shot. Yeah, this is just a really nice comic. I thought this was a really, really good, um, good episode, episode issue. Um, it does look like they, they kill this guy by trapping him in an infinite um, portal loop where he just keeps going from one portal to the other and then back again, which to me sounds like they killed him, which is kind of interesting, but, uh, there's also, you know, the friendship going on between Miles and Riri that you get in a lot of the Champions like level stuff. Um, it's really nice. It's, it's really kind of cool. Uh, I'm liking it. I like what E-Viewing is, is doing with it. There's a lot of family stuff that keeps Riri grounded. Um, but in general, it wasn't a stellar issue. It was just really good. I suggest that and Champions if you like that sort of thing. Wow. So good. So, so good. I don't know what's happening. It looks like Little Birds had it at the end. It looks like Dad is, is or Grandpa is has had it. I mean, he's chopped to pieces. Um, 
this is one of those where, I mean, Little Bird is the Earth, right? Um, this guy here, like, it looks like he's had, sorry, I always get it backwards when I do it in the screen. It looks like he had all these, like, arms that just look like these weird tentacles, but he used them to slice, do it this way. Ah, I can't get, there we go. He used it to slice all these people up. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it's just really sick. Um, there's just always a, a surprise in this that's really sick. Um, you know, little bird here, she's covered in blood. Uh, things are happening. We come across a guy who um, betrayed the axe, but then looks like he didn't like that he was not being paid properly for his betrayal. So he's now going to maybe be the savior. I don't know what's going on, um, but... Things aren't looking too good for for Little Bird right there, right? Um, so, yeah, this is just, it's so hard for me to describe this book. I've got to take a long, slow reread of all this, but th this is a phenomenally cool issue. Um, absolutely cool. Come on. I get it for the covers just like you. And that brings me up to this. I don't know why I have second printing of four and I somehow ended up with three copies of five. Um, this story is absolutely fascinating to me because not much is happening of like great import. It's coming out in drips and drabs, but because Bendis is so good at writing and I don't care if you don't like Bendis, I don't care if he's not your T or you don't like what he's doing in Superman. Bendis is a good writer. Okay, that's that's fact. He knows how to write well. Whether or not you like his stories or everything he's done, I mean, I, he's so buried. I don't think you can be like, oh, I don't like Bendis' stuff, right? It's like, well, what do you mean? You don't like the Miles stuff he did. You don't like the Jessica Jones stuff he did. You don't like Powers, which is, you know, his indie that's been going forever. You don't like Scarlet. You don't like Naomi. They're all different you can't just be like bendis whatever i mean you can you can do whatever you want but people who do like oh i just don't like bendis it's like oh man you're so cool you got such cred you don't like bendis um he writes so much so you know at least acknowledge that he's a good writer even if you don't like his stuff you can acknowledge that um so again these are both really really great um compelling stories but they're they're dragging out you know Right now, the truth has kind of been the the antagonist um, as to, you know, who am I? What am I doing here? How did I get here? Who are my real parents? What alien race am I a member of? You know, what powers do I have? And they're teasing these things out, but they're kind of coming like, now we know her dad's an alien. We know her mom's human. We know she's an alien that's not from either her dad or her mom's race. We know that her dad and that other garage mechanic guy are on the earth. They were adversaries, but they basically gave up their interstellar policing, whatever. Um, we know now that Naomi has powers. So you can see I'm, I'm intrigued by the story, but I haven't felt any issue go like, pow, that's awesome. It's just a really well done story. Um, the more we learn about Naomi, the more the truth has. And I'm sorry, I got to give David Walker credit for this. He does it with he writes with Bendis. They write it together. Um. So yeah, I got to give credit here. Um, it, they're doing a really nice job, but the more truth we know, the more we're going to need another antagonist. I mean, she's going to need a, a big bad or a bunch of little bads or uh, opposing good uh, to give her character some conflict to keep the story going. All right. That's a lot of my thoughts on picks of the week. Uh, let's see. We had Naomi said covers put that in that pile little bird could be up there with naomi iron heart will go middle of the road still very solid batman that's gonna go in the no chance pile monstrous like i said it could be pick of the week i just haven't read it yet um <laughs> this one had snakes nope pearl would go in the really good solid pile lumberjanes I know it's not like what you would expect, but that's going in the could be pile. Farmhands going in the could be pile. Invisible Kingdoms going in the could be pile. Outcast knee. 
paper girls and it could be pile. I'm trying to whittle this down. That's going to go in the solid pile. So that brings us to a smaller stack. I'm going to put the Naomi's, the four issues I have over there. And that leaves us with, is it going to be Little Bird? Possibly. Is it going to be Lumberjanes? Possibly. Farmhand? It pains me, but it's not quite up there. Invisible Kingdom? Not quite. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do three picks of the week because I'm three weeks behind. And I'm going to give it to Paper Girls 28, Lumberjanes 62, and Little Bird Issue 3. Those are my picks of the week. Hey, everybody. Thank you for sticking with me and checking it out. Hopefully, uh, tomorrow I will do one that will be much, much shorter and only go over two or three comics. Uh, if you're a Chelsea fan, they're playing in the uh, Europa League final against Arsenal tomorrow. Go Blues. And uh, I will have an auction preview out Thursday. I have an auction on my channel, Tacoma Comics, that you're watching right now. Uh, it will be Sunday, this Sunday, June 2nd, Pacific Coast time from 5 to 10 p.m. So if you're on the East Coast, that's 8 to like 2 a.m. So I'm trying to do a nice crossover for the East Coast people. Um, check it out for sure. I'm going to have Bear Island Comics on. I'm going to have uh, Comic Smurf on. Uh, Caleb is going to be there. I'm going to have Poor Man's Comics. I'm going to have uh, Drew Manchu, Who Dot Comics, and I got like six or seven maybes. Uh, I want to make it a big five-hour auction. You know, maybe come for the first two hours, and if you can't make it, leave and let somebody else come. Um, I don't have a lot of big boy books. If you like bargains, man, I got a lot of like ten, fifteen, twenty dollar lots that uh, you might really, really like. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'll show you that that preview video on Thursday and. Uh, you know, if you see something you like, definitely uh, take it from there. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. And shout out to Just Regan. I'm going to be on his show July 14th. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.